What's up, everyone? Beast Mode's back here with another video. Um, so, unfortunately, I tried to record round five and six of the RBET tournament, and I don't know what I did, but it did not record right, no sound, and I spent like 40 minutes trying to do it, so I got a little discouraged, and I have since moved on to our first top eight match of RBET 5. So, um, if you are interested in seeing those matches, they are on stream i played on stream pretty much all day um they're on the rbt5 um tournament stream on e3 channel there so um plus i kind of want to move forward with the series here i want to get through top eight and then i want to review the world's matches um while they're still relevant the longer this takes um the metagame's going to be changing and stuff and it just kind of loses its uh importance really so here we're playing against alfia too he is a really good goal player um tops a lot of tournaments um his deck here i'm not even sure what to really call it um it's like a chaos stun gravekeeper deck um the deck looks like it came from 2005 um so obviously he has really good fundamentals he's a really good go player pretty much can play anything um took this old school kind of deck and went like i don't know six and oh or something with it um so we play in top eight and we'll just review the match here we'll, uh, and i'll discuss some of my choices and we'll see how this went Alrighty, let's see here. So we're just waiting for the stream. Alright, so obviously decent hand. You see Trap does shoot, you're just, uh, you're feeling pretty good. So this is a, this is a pretty good hand here. Um, so right here, the best play in my opinion is probably like the dust, you set dust shoot, um, set tomato I would guess. Set the mirror force too, interesting. So at this point, I do know what he's playing. Um, the top eight decks, not that I know the, the cards per se in his deck, but I know we have an idea of what everybody's playing in top eight. kind of gets leaked. Um, take a look at his hand here. Oh, let me hide his hand. Well, I'll show it now because I dust shoot it anyway. So we see what he has. Um, we know he has a heavy. He has a torrential. Um, so we send the one spy that we really can't deal with here and make the alert dead. Now I'll hide the hand. Just um, his hand. There we go. So we saw he has Torrential and Heavy. Um, so at this point, we know he can either set Torrential, Heavy, or Allure, right? Um, so I don't want to flip into Torrential here. I don't have anything else. Um, so we're just kind of playing it slow still. All right, so I draw another monster here. So I have a playable monster. Let's see what we're going to do. All right, so we flip Tomato. Let's see if we can get the uh, Torrential to go off. And he... He's slow rolling it. He does not flip Torrential. So at this point, I'm thinking to myself, that's either Torrential or Heavy Storm. Um, I'm, I'm more so thinking it's a Heavy Storm, which it is, turns out to be. Um, so I'm just summoning, uh, flip summoning and attacking here. We're just playing slow. We're not trying to give him any pluses with the Torrential, um, which is what he's looking for. Like I said, he has really good fundamentals, really looking for every card to generate him advantage, plus one, minus one, like I said. Um, playing every card with purpose. So now we got to deal with Stratos, which is not fun. So at this point, we know that he obviously drew a Dark Monster, right? Because he didn't have one. Um, so likely he drew the Sagan. So we know that his hand's two alias, um, heavy, Stratos. So we know four cards right off the bat. So there was the heavy. So we know he still has Torrential. So I'm guessing in this situation here, we probably could just pull the um, Ill Blood. We could pull, we have access to just about anything. Spirit Reaper here. Um, so my thought is, I know he has Torrential. So he has to draw specifically a like Battle Trap like Mirror Force to stop this here because, or Gemini Spark, of course, um, which I'm not sure if he plays. I would assume he does if he has the alias, but um, so this guy's going to run over the alias, um, and we're hoping to rip a card out of the hand with Spirit Reaper. So that's why I do this play here, because I'm always trying to generate advantage. Sure, I could have pulled um, a Goblin Zombie. I could have pulled Plague, and then I'm having to summon Mizuki into a Torrential. Like, that's just no good in the situation. We know he has Torrential, so um, I could have pulled Ill Blood, which would have been fine, because um, I could have just ran over the uh, alias with it. Um, that's also an option. So we're setting a lot of back row here. Um, we're not going to be able to commit anything to the board because we know he has Torrential, so it's going to be switch Trigodia here, I'm guessing, is what I did. Oh, even better, I take it. That's right. 
Um, so yeah, Trigodi always has that other effect that comes into play every now and then where you can discard a card and take control of, or the monster you discard has to have the same level as the card you try and take control of, um, which is why Illblood is also good in here. I forgot to say that sometimes you can steal like level six, the arm wings, you can steal Caius. Um, so we're going to take his alias here, which is great. So we keep the track and defense, no need to, uh, to run into Mirror Force. This is the most important guy of the whole board here. We're trying to get that plus one, and we do. It makes you feel good when you hit with a Spirit Reaper. So we hit the other alias. So we set Book here, which is fine. Uh, we know he doesn't have the Heavy anymore. Free to set whatever we like. So the reason why we set the book is because we hit the other alias, so now he can't run over the track unless, you know, he draws that. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty sure we're just going to let this happen. It's not a huge deal. Trag kind of already did what it needed to do. So again, we're in the same situation we were last turn, essentially. We can crash these two alias, and we're going to be able to rip another card out of his hand with Spirit Reaper. That's the plan here. We're not going to play into Torrential. There's no need. We know. And this is why Dust Shoot is so good. This whole You can just see this whole game here. Like You're playing around his whole hand the whole time. Um, the card's really busted when you draw it turn one. So that went through, and now we're ripping another card. So at this point, Reaper has pulled um, two cards out of the hand. Um, we know he has a torrential, and we don't know the other two, so um, it's really hard to lose in this position here. So he's just drawing to set now because he doesn't want me to rip the card out of his hand. Um, I'm still attacking. I, I can't summon into it. I guess I could have put it to defense. You can, the 300 isn't really worth it, but um, we're just poking away here. We have defense. Um, we know that we can't summon this because of torrential. So no heavy, so at this point I just set the torrential as well, just in case he makes a big comeback or a play. S still setting cards, so at this point he's locked now. Um, not going to summon anything, we're not going to play into torrential. You know, we're not really getting anywhere with 300 every turn, but... So now at this point, if he draws another spell of trap, he has no choice but to end his turn because he can't set it. So now he plays Book of Moon. So that's now three cards that this Spirit Reaper has. It's got two cards from the hand and a Book of Moon. So three cards. Um, so at this point, I'm kind of figuring that he's probably going to um, Torrential here, and he doesn't, which is fine. So I also now have to kind of play the game, right? I'm, I'm, I got him on the ropes, but I'm really trying to play around this Torrential probably too much at this point. Um, but Sangin is free. So if he Torrentials here, it's really just um, a one-for-one one with the Torrential and the Reaper. But this Reaper has gotten three cards. It, it's definitely worth. So um, oh, we just got some messages there. So we get the Torrential. My favorite card, I think if you've seen any other video, I seem to search this thing all the time. Really good against this deck, again, because he has a lot of beaters in the deck. Um, especially where everything's committed to the board. We could also Black Rose at some point. Um, especially with the Book of Life play. We gotta, we, we, we're got we pretty set up here. So Let's see. Alright. Um, so this is a little tricky here. Playing slow. Ideally, if this dies, it, he could grab. Uh, I'd grab a, a goblin zombie, and then we would try a black rose play. That would be good, um, because at that point, if a black rose goes off with a goblin zombie, you're talking like I have like a plus six to him top decking. Um, probably never gonna lose that game. So here's spy, which is perfect because pyramid turtles like MVP against spy, especially when they're in attack position, right? So he has not stopped any of my attacks so far, um, so we're just going to swing. That goes through. So this is like devastating here because I play triple turtle. Um, so we're just going to eat both of these spies. Um, if I could play more than one spirit reaper, I would have pulled it out here, but I can't. So now Illblood's in for free, and it switches into a bottomless. That's what's really good about that. It can't bottomless here. He does play spark. Um, so we're going to hit for 2100. 
again, see, I could have summoned a monster. I could have done other things here. We're just still just playing very slow. Oh, we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards. He's got what? Six. I'm on the draw. Uh, um, so I'll be up to 11, 11 to six. I have plus five, essentially. Gores, you know, it's really hard for me to lose this game. I still have all my zombie combos. Have not made a synchro yet. Um, I, if you've watched any of the other games, I really don't synchro often. Um, and now we drew Solemn, so we're pretty set. Right? So we know the Torrential's gone. Mirror Force is still real. Um, so Gale here in, what are we making? So it's actually kind of cool because I can make a Black Rose and not use the effect. And I have the Mystic Tomato that I could flip the guy and attack. Uh, but at this point, we're going to try to blow things up because I have six cards and I have game, essentially. Solemns. So we just attack. No biggie. All right. So now we have Solemn for next turn to try to go for game. Um he just scoops he can't brain control he draws absolutely dead so um if he doesn't play a card i literally draw i'm going to battle phase and i'm attacking i'm not doing anything other than that even because if he has a battle trap i'm just going to solemn so um that game there we made one synchro that got solemned and um of course we still had all the combos we we're just looking for a um goblin zombie really we have the you know burial we could explode any turn um so that game was kind of one just turn one by trap dust shoot i literally played around the torrential the entire time and spirit reaper essentially got a plus what three or something so move into the next game let's see here um so this hand here is okay um you know, you don't like to see him early. It's not that great. I side decked in Cyber Dragon here. Um, so I'll, if I remember correctly, I kind of play this game a little ass backwards, I would say. Not very good. Um, I look at my hand, and I feel that my hand is pretty weak. I know that he has an alias in his hand. Um, so we're going to go Cyber Dragon. We set Bottomless and Solemn. This card's really not good right now. Like, I have a bunch of cards that just are not that impactful. So, this here is kind of probably not the right play now that I think about it. So, I have Solemn here, and I could just let him contact, and um, I could let him contact, and I just bottomless the um, 2000, but I lose my guy. Um, I believe I actually Solemn here. Um, my thought is keep my cyber dragon maybe next turn beat for 2100 and then i have a heavy to end vortex so i can maybe push with the zombie master the cyber dragon and like a vortex aboard and maybe seal the game pretty quick um looking back on it, it's probably not the most ideal um i'm glad he didn't get the draw with the car trooper he wouldn't have had anyway but um yeah that's sometimes the risk you run when you put in cyber dragon and i did see the car trooper um game one but it's one car trooper so you just like um, so right here, um, like, well, I'm just going to attack. Hopefully he doesn't have gores. He does, which is fine. That You can pretty much assume they always will. So I can vortex here. Um, I don't think I do. I think I just have the mirror force play. Again, my whole thought process is in this in this game here, which I probably did not play very well at all, um, is I'm going to try to win the game with Cyber Dragon, Zombie Master, this Vortex, and this Heavy. That's what I'm going to try to do. Like next turn, I have game. If he if uh, I Mirror Force here, keep my guys alive, I can Heavy and Vortex is a remaining monster. So in this point right here, if he does not if he does not set a monster, I can probably just win the game, despite my hand not being very good because I made the decision to solemn the um, car trooper, which um, again, is it the best play? Maybe not. Um, so at this point I'm thinking to myself, just don't set a monster. I can just win. I can win the game. He sets a monster. <laughs> and as you can tell, it's a spy. So that's the worst case scenario here because um, does he have a solemn? He does have a solemn anyway, so he would be able to solemn the heavy. Um, so that was kind of my thought. Um, so let's see here. The token's 2100. 
So I still gonna try to heavy for the plus one. He solemns. So he's down pretty low here. We're both down pretty low. And I eat a mirror force. And um, since it's not going very well, at in this point here, like putting the zombie master to defense or or switching the cyber dragon to defense, um, I just didn't feel like it was worth it. Yeah, I I, I lose to mirror force there, but. Um, Anything can run over the Zombie Master in defense, and the Cyber Dragon is not very strong, and he already has a token that's big enough anyway, so it's just kind of like, you either have it, if he has it, he has it. I kind of already am, um, I've committed to this kind of strategy of trying to win that way, and obviously it's not working. If you see the cards I've drawn, um, you know, Heavy Gut Stop would have been great, but Zombie Master alone is just not good enough. Um, so looking at this game here, I definitely could have done other plays and it's hard to say if they would have been better or not you know i think maybe not soloming the car trooper would be better um maybe not mirror forcing just the gores there um and maybe trying to set up a, a bigger vortex would have been a better play just lose the cyber dragon but again i was kind of on that one track mind i was thinking like this is how i'm going to try to win this game and um as you can see my thought process you know obviously he had a solemn but if the heavy sticks and he doesn't set the monster there i i, I really do win the game but um so at this point, it's just it's getting terrible. Uh, I'm probably obviously losing this game at this point. Um, so that's that. So that game was not played the best. Um, I didn't have a very strong hand. I kind of went with this one-track mind of how I'm going to win this game, and um, unfortunately it didn't work out. Um, game one, I played pretty well, obviously playing around the, the torrential with the dust shoot. So let's hop into game three. So hand's okay. Um, still got the Vortex here. Vortex has since come out of the side deck. It's still a decent card. Um, so we just set the Pyramid Turtle. We're hoping that he summons a Stratos or an Alias and hits it. We wouldn't be that lucky. Um, so we draw a Double Diva here, so that's always great. I seem to do that every time I top 8. Um, so we have three tuners in our hand, but this I don't often look at as a tuner. I look at it as a Smash of Ground or a 1 for 1. So we'll see what he has. He has a Torrential. All right. So one for one trade. We're not going to complain about that. All right. So what do we got here? We can make a play. Um, don't feel it. so having goblin zombie and torrential is a really good setup, especially where they just set a monster. So I'm going to try to bait a big torrential. Is my thought summoning a diva and not getting the effect literally tells him I have another diva in my hand so then he can decide to play very aggressive I just don't think it's worth it at that point especially just making a synchro into a back row and I can't win the game you know if I diva last turn maybe I make a uh, I can't make Hades so what do I make Brio and then it gets bottomless like you never make Brio until you really can win the game so um, we're just trying to bait this hef this uh, this set um, torrential here don't think there's a need to commit anything. We're still trying, but of course he knows that uh, you know, he's playing to not lose advantage either. So it's really hard um, to get the plus here. So at this point, we don't have a choice. We have to torrential, which is fine. Um, so it's kind of like a um, one, two. It's like a plus one there anyway. So I think at this point, you can make the argument to search for um, uh, Spirit Reaper too. Um, I often like to just go Goblin Zombie into Goblin Zombie. It's just an, another way to um, keep plussing. Could make this, this the choice to grab a Mizuki for the Vortex play. That's also fine but i'm figuring that my next goblin zombie will get me there so again i like to play it very slow so i have a lot of monsters here this hand's really not that good um but here it's free if the only thing that stops is d prison set of vortex trying to bluff i have to set the vortex or i have to discard anyway um so my point uh, i can do one of two things i can summon the sang in here he doesn't have Torrential, which is um, what we do. And we're just going to go Weenie Beat down here. Um, both of these are pluses. If it's a Mirror Force, we don't care. Okay, so he deprisons that. 
which that saying again doesn't matter that I get to prison because the card that I typically search is Diva, so it's fine. Um, at this point, I already have Gale, so the thing I would have to search is Necrogodna or Plague, which you don't want to do Plague here. You already have a bunch of tuners. There's really no need. Plus, you have the Goblin Zombie to search whatever you want at that time, and you have Pyramid Turtle, so... Um, I'm actually very happy that he deprisons that. We hit a Nobleman, which a lot of people are starting to side deck now, um, or more so. Card is really good turn one, but after that, it's useless because you know you're pretty much summoning at that point. So he's got seven cards. We have what five, six, seven, eight, and we're on the draw is nine. So you know we're just slowly grinding here through the torrential. I side decked in the Sorokos because he plays a lot of beaters, and obviously I'm just drawing monster after monster here. But fortunately, it doesn't matter because he's not putting any pressure on us, so we don't need traps. So that hurts a little bit. Um, so he's already used two of them, so that's no big deal. Let's see what he does next here. Six cards in hand. It's just not playing. Um, so my guess is we can do a Gale play here, just to half it. Now let's see. He, we know he doesn't have Torrential. He could have Mirror Force. Poking. My guess is that we just pass. We don't set the Dust Tornado. We don't want to just get destroyed by a Heavy Storm. We have Trag if we need it. So we're sitting okay because he's not putting any pressure. If he was putting any pressure on us, Double Diva on our hand would be just awful. Um, so now we have to deal with uh, the Stratos here. Um, I do save the Gale because um, I think he searched the Stratos here and didn't summon the Stratos and didn't search. So yeah, no effect. So that's not even a plus one. So I don't mind just one for one here to keep my Gale alive. If he went and searched, this kind of hurts a little bit more doing that. Uh, we like. Because, again, I think I've discussed in other videos, you just don't want to have to waste cards on Stratos. Um, but here it's fine. So now we have a mind control play, even with one of the Divas. So we're just stocking up cards here, and we're not going to need to summon anything. We just go right to battle phase again. So there's the Mirror Force. So it's a run for run, essentially. The Goblin Zombie's going to replace himself. Um, let's see what I grab here. Yep, we grab the Mizuki now. So that's so. Think about it. A few turns ago, uh, I went Goblin Zombie into Goblin Zombie rather than the Mizuki, even though I had the Vortex, because this Goblin Zombie has done what two direct attacks. So um, you know, and and Mizuki can summon into Bottomless, which is what he has. So again, just playing it slow, playing cards that generate advantage. That's how I play this game. I don't go for all the combo plays. You know, as you see, I very rarely synchro. Um, I just want to play the game very slow, gain plus ones, and um, have seven more cards than my opponent at the end of the turn. So we got seven, nine cards. They have seven. So he's obviously managing his resources very well. Like I said, very good player. Um so we can't stop this, but that's okay, because we've already gone through a lot of our gol uh, our zombies, rather. We could obviously pull a um, ill blood here, but I don't think he's going to give us a choice. I'm fine with this. Not a big deal. So, so we pick off the new one. So now we have some decisions to make here. We, could, we may summon Mizuki here, um, or not. He hasn't bottomless yet. So, which is the reason why I don't summon the Mizuki, and he does in fact have a bottomless, so this is pretty um, heads up here. We don't care if the Mizuki dies, because next turn we can, always, if he summons a monster, kills Mizuki, we got it in the graveyard where it's the best, and we can then summon Sirocco. Or mind control, uh, summon Sirocco, sorry, we can mind control and make a diva play next turn if we decide to do that. So this kind of hurts. I wasn't expecting a breaker. I think I saw it in one game, but... Um, so he's going to get a, a plus one here, essentially, um, although Mizuki, like I said, is pretty free. So I think at this point, I am pretty certain that it's a, um, a bottomless face down there. So I do MST it because I want the Sirocco to stick. And we were right. So he's at 4,500 here. So this is, the, this is our turn, our chance here to, um, make a big push. 
it sucks that the diva is in my hand because if it wasn't i could have done diva mind control to make two level sixes and just won the game if he doesn't have gores um so he knows i have another diva in my hand it's pretty obvious research a plague Trying to think if it was something else. I could have smashed, but it's not worth doing that there. I want to take the guy. Um, so he's going up to five cards. I have six cards in my hand. I have plenty of removal. I always have a mind control plague. Play. I'm sitting fine. There's not any way. Plenty of life points. Um, I feel pretty much in control of this game here. Like I said, if I don't have the double diva in my hand, I probably game him last turn. Um, so he does have a brain control. Guessing he wants his guy back. There we go. So he double sets. So for a second, I'm confused. Um, I'm like, totally spaced my mind what he could possibly have been to, uh, had sacked for. Um, so we're going to find out. Again, we have the smashing ground here, so it doesn't matter. We smash it. He books. It's fine. Um, so we have a Trigodia here. So we did, that's exactly what we're going to do here. We don't want the, the Kaiku to hit us directly. Um, so we can activate Trigodia's effect here. We can pitch this to take the Kaiku, um, which is great. And then we can sack for a Caius is what I'm guessing we do. So, um, so that's the game. Um, so Trag obviously put in work with the like second effect, I think it is, that you can discard cards. So um, his deck, the one problem I saw with his deck is just not explosive enough to um, to really deal with zombies, even though I play very slow. This deck, um, his deck against like the hero zombie build, I'm not sure it has a very good matchup just because of the fact that that deck can explode. Um, Obviously, my, this deck here, the deck I've been playing, can as well, but I just play it very, very slow, and I just don't make enough synchros for it. Um, again, you can say it's wrong. That's fine. Um, I do. I play. try to play every card with a purpose. I do not like to just windmill slam in synchro because I can. So, sure, I, this hand here is plenty live. I can mind control. I can I can have plays the whole game. Sure, the, I had a, two divas in my hand, so there's still one sitting here. But um, as you can see, there's really never a time this game where I was – on the ropes ever um it's possible just because i have better cards in the deck than that deck does like great keeper spy is good but he doesn't play descendant um you know he he really topped just i think due to the fact that he's just a really good player fundamentally um not that the deck was just broken because if you look at the deck it, it it's just not explosive it it's um it has to be played properly and obviously he was doing that and this player here has actually topped with aliens since then um so just a really good player um it was a good match, and I hope you were able to take something from it. Next uh, video is going to be uh, semifinals versus 10 foot um, on Bayou, and um, we'll see what I could have done better there. I'm definitely, sh I'm pretty sure I made a few misplays that uh, that match, and I am planning on trying to do the Black Wing review video. Try to get some of my teammates maybe on the next video once I figure out how to add Discord to these videos. So um, if you have any questions, send me a message, comment. I've been reading a lot of the comments. There is a few that were definitely um, pointing out some plays I could have made differently and 100% correct. Um, and like I said, I am not the world's greatest player. I feel that I'm decent. I top quite a few tournaments, and I think that there might be something that I can offer in, in terms of reviewing some of these videos, so or games rather. So like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.